This is part two, man. Yeah. We got we got a sequel. We have. Return of yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you want to fire away then? Yeah, I've I've I've, I've I went for a walk. Uh there's a park just by me, which I have a lot of time for, and has a lot of time for me, it turns out. And it's it's odd because I've I've lived here in like 20 years or so and I never really got to know it properly um, until I think particularly during lockdown yeah and I'm also someone who has been told before now you know I'm, I'm you know I was just I've someone decided I was bipolar at some point and I, I there's a there's a something for sure we can quibble about what the description is but there you go yeah. Yeah. and for sure kind of exercise just getting out of the house and but there's also that more primal thing of like well this is what humans do <laughs> and something that occurred earlier in fact which is the other part of this is we're doing more and more work on screens and screens can be fine we love screens i you know i've, I've written for you know short films and television things like this screens are fab but once we have a kind of overdose of those in our working lives, then they, and this is where I realised, oh, phonetic ambiguity, they flatten us. Yes. In both ways. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, they're bad news. Um, in, you know, if, if, if you haven't got some sort of means of handling that, uh, so the park is part of it, and the park is also, um, it's got a wonderful name, so it's Vernon Park, which is a lovely kind of unassuming place, and it's got its own, um, it's got a stone circle, which was a council-built one from the 1930s or 1940s or something by the local library, and there's something cute about that, uh, as the, there's a really nice Kind of stone art as well and the stone circle is kind of toddler size which is really what it was built for so it, it's a circle of stones rather than you know, hinges or whatnot but it's it's just lovely that it's there and i continue to find different facets to it and uh earlier this year this year no last year um i've been working on a story for a while which was starting to take shape which was to do with um yeah sort of worms the dragony sort of worms and i was getting ready to leave the house knowing that i would walk through the park on my way into town and i had this happens sometimes. I've got my bag, which a friend had made out of an old pair of jeans and all this with my uh, bits and pieces in it. And a voice in my head said, oh, you know, you you need to remove the, the kind of little box that you've got in one of the pockets on the bag and put in an empty box. So I did. <laughs> and... You know, whatever. And I head to the park and a word that had kind of popped up for me in this context was worm cast. Right. Which I and I'd never quite you know, I'm not really a gardening kind of person, although I very much approve of it and I like being in gardens, but I wasn't quite sure what a worm cast was, but I had a, a yeah, something of an idea of that. And so that was kind of hanging around there and was part of this wider thing, which is a story that's kind of related to the Lampton Worm story called uh, Vin Diesel and the Lampton Worm. Um, <laughs> right. resist. 
Um, so, and I'm, I'm in the park and it's solstice. <laughs> it's also worth noting. Summer solstice last year. And as I go through, there's a particular section I take and this worm cast thing is gnawing at me as I near a gate which I've never seen open. And I know it just backs onto this, this, this one, there's a cul-de-sac there and it's the gate there and it's like, oh, I've always wanted to go there. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure exactly which cul-de-sac is, you know, but I need, I need to go through that gate. And I catch a, a glimpse as I look down, little thing on the floor. Damn, I've actually got the prop somewhere in the house, <laughs> if, if, if a prop it is, but it's this little spiral. Yeah. I'll send you a photo of it later. And to my eyes, it's uh, a worm cast. And it's for sure a very, very interesting organic piece. But I was also thinking, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of more a WYRM cast, <laughs> which is the kind of I mean I'm interested in because it's, it's, it's got more structure because I, I, yeah, then when and later sort of looked into worm cast and you know, it shouldn't it be as quite what this is, but I've got this beautiful, beautiful object, but I had to protect it. So, and it needed to be in that box that I got. And that gate was open <laughs> on that day as well for the first time. Well, not ever, but ever in my experience, so I could kind of walk through. Um, and it was also a space where there's a, there's a, and a big pond there where you'll occasionally find a dead body and police tape. That's happened twice. Um, but also I had a, before the worm, lantern worm stuff popped up, I had, I don't know what was going on for me at that point, but I was quite interested in the idea that a dragon might be in this pond. Yeah. And I'm standing on a, what do you call them? It's not a jetty, that sounds far too American or French or something, but a little bit of wood <laughs> pokes out into the pond. And I'm just kind of contemplating that. And some, you know, and a uh, mother and young son, little toddler lad, they're kind of sort of coming behind me. And as they do so, the lad goes, there's a, there's a dragon in that lake, mommy. Yeah. And where these things take me before I am taken <laughs> is to, to again that 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 realization of uh, let let's say animism, mm. where which also then feeds into my knowledge <laughs> that story has entity. Mm. Yes, and yeah, and sometimes props and yeah, etc. That's an interesting point. Um, this is a great story. Um, if you listen to great storytellers telling stories in situ, they will often bring objects. They might be telling a story about, you know, some sort of Norse saga, but they will bring, you know, objects that yeah. are in place into the story. Yeah. So, in other words, it grounds you in the story in the yeah. present. Yeah, and that is definitely a, a storyteller's technique to do that. Uh, so it's not like this. This story is happening over here; it's happening no. now. Yeah, right? yeah. And I think what happens with that is that obviously enhances that feeling of the story having some sort of agency yeah. in the room. Yeah. And I've often spoken about this with songs. That yes. You write, in fact, I was listening to a bunch of songs that I wrote over a period of, you know, 30 odd years. Mm -hmm. And I could go, yeah, that was, that was a foretelling of this thing that happened to me. And that story, that song is a foretelling of this. Now, yeah, yeah. you know, obviously somebody who was a sort of materialist would, Think, well, it's nonsense, but but there is a sort of a, an uncanny truth to that. 
that you start to wonder whether you know the future that's coming or maybe you're you're creating the future that's coming um either way it's probably better to write songs that are the future that you actually want and i've been thinking this quite some time (laughs) that it might be a good thing to do but i've found as well that sometimes um Okay, let's start this. <laughs> in the same park. Uh, there was a point when my mother had a hip replacement, uh, 2022. And it was, um, I think it would have been July at this point, or possibly the start of August, but anyway. And she, she's down in Exeter. I couldn't go to see her at that point because it's just like her and her husband there and you you know, visitors after a few days. Yeah. And I'm sat in the park, same park, and I'm, as I speak to mom the day after, you know, after she's had her operation that day, I'm happening to watch. It just happens to be in my field of vision, a game of tennis that's playing. And at the other end of the phone, there's mom. And she's also watching a game of tennis. Uh, from the window of the hospital uh, that she's in, and she's she's kind of not in a good way. You know, they all succeeded, but it was it was tricky. And as it happens, um, her name's Maureen, and she was named after uh, a tennis player called Maureen Connolly, and was born in the Wimbledon area, whatever. Right, and I head down to visit mom, you know, a few days later. And you've got this kind of six week ordeal of you need to be able to do these things if this hip replacement is really going to work. And at this point, she's like 82, 83. It's tough. It's tough. And a lot of the time she is on the sofa and while she's on the sofa, she's watching the Olympics, which were a, you know, a year late. And so there's a lot of that going on. And there was a particular day which I recognised she was in a particularly bad way. And um, so what are we going to do? You know, <laughs> it's like, what? there's someone I love here. What what happens at this point? And okay, okay, so utilize. And okay, so she's watching the Olympics. So so well, what if you treated the exercises as your Olympic event? Yeah. And signs of life. <laughs> it's like, yeah. And then will I get a medal? <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah so so that so that was beautiful already yeah and then if i rewind a bit so the previous time i've been in exeter with mom uh, or certainly a previous time that year anyway you know sometimes you'll come across these phone boxes <laughs> another box that <laughs> phone box full of books yes um, so it's kind of like a TARDIS at that point because the book within <laughs> yeah. take you to anywhere in time and space, especially if the and it, this the only book I wanted from it and it, and, and also no, let's not be greedy was Chucky by John Wyndham, which I'd not read before. I'd read you know Triffids and whatnot, but but not this. So I have got that book and I get home to Nottingham and. I have, among other things, got to sort out this medal for mom, and I found out somewhere to to get it because you, you've kind of you've got to deliver at that point. Yes, yes, you have absolutely. And um, and I wanted, you know, I I couldn't afford a gold medal, but I could I could certainly find something that looked like gold. <laughs> yeah. And while all that was happening, I was starting on the uh, I was I was reading Chucky some of the time as well as doing whatever I do in the day. And 
in the book Chucky, you've got this, I know, the, the, kid, the lad, eight or whatever years old, and he's having some sort of contact with a, an alien entity. Uh, and it's kind of, the viewpoint in the book is, is mostly the father's, uh, so it's kind of related by him a, a lot of the time. And it's, um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's an enjoyable read. And I get the medal sorted out on the Friday of the uh, week before the six week deadline is up. <laughs> so that is all done and dusted and we'll be engraved with an appropriate message and a ribbon. And I, on the Monday, when that is in the post to her, I, I finish the rest of Chucky. It's a very simple read. And as the story ends, the alien goes away. And the father wants to remember this episode for his son. You know, it's a rite of passage for him. And so he decides, and you see a picture of it on the last page, that he's going to get his son a medal. So at that point, <laughs> the notion of, wow, you've got something really interesting going on there. So the, yes. the interaction with someone else's story there and wherever they'd got it from uh, was, was pretty special. Mm. And spilling over into your world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... I'll tell you a little story which is very similar to that. <laughs> I always like, I like things when it's like, yeah, okay, I've got the same vibe. Okay, so my the book that I did, um, just, I've got a copy of it so I can show you. So. <clears throat> Obviously, this is based on the idea of Sergeant Pepper as Sergeant Pepper's a cutter. Brilliant. <laughs> but what we did was we created, I've got this lady who did this artwork for me, which is I like that. Yeah. In, the, in the stories in the book. Yeah, brilliant. So um so instead of it being like a mandala that Ganesha's sitting on, she made it a sunflower because there was something in the stories about something. Yeah. So all this is coming together, you know, it's being edited and all the rest of it. And, you know, we're just going through those last, that last bit takes ages. Yeah. yeah. And in the garden of the house I was living in, there was a big pot that we had, a terracotta pot. It was massive. And there wasn't really anything growing in it. I thought, well, I might as well just get some compost and bung something in there just to make it. And it's just not a load of old nonsense. So what I did was I put some, I suppressed what was in the pot already with some, yeah. with some sort of wet cardboard, and then I put fresh compost on the top. Bought some nasturtiums and some sweet peas. Stuck them in, and you know they're sort of growing a little bit. But it's like anything; if you buy something, it takes a while, doesn't it? It's a bit like it doesn't know where it is anymore, type of thing. And then there was this other plant started to come out of the pot, growing really quickly. And I'm thinking, uh, okay, so what's this? At first, I thought it's, it's like a pepper. <laughs> So it gets a little bit bigger, and I'm thinking, that's a sunflower. So a sunflower is growing in this pot. So eventually, when it flowers, I take the photograph of this and send it to the woman who did the artwork and said, look what's come up in the garden. You know, I didn't plant it. So I thought about it, and I thought, well, it's probably... bird has taken it from a feeder yeah dropped it into the pot 
So I didn't really think any more about but I was listening to a book on Audible by a guy called Martin Practel. Now, Martin Practel has written some amazing stuff. He was a Guatemalan shaman. And his most famous book is this book called The Secrets of the Talking Jaguar, which is an amazing book. But this one is called The, um, uh, was it the Unlikely Peace at... I can't, it's one of these... It's, uh, uh, Mayan names is almost unpronounceable. Uh, Chaka Pul, Pulik or something. Anyway, but anyway, it's talking about this, and it was about the, the the Mayans trying to get back to after the Guatemalan conflict, finding the the, the corn seeds, the ceremonial corn seeds that they were. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it focuses on one particular story. There's lots of stories in it, but there's one particular story. That it got to where there was a, a farmer who'd taken over the house of his grandmother, and the and everybody believed that the grandmother had a pot of gold somewhere planted, you know, it stashed away somewhere. No one could find it. So this guy is sitting in his kitchen, and suddenly he just thinks it's in the it's in the chimney. So. He, he digs a couple of bricks out and finds this pot. So in this pot is a couple of gold coins, not many, about four. Not the pot of gold that everyone was thinking, but it was full of corn seeds. Yeah. So that was her pot of gold, right? Yeah. So he plants them, but they're too old. So they don't germinate. So that's sort of very disappointing. But he goes out into the garden. And there in the garden, just randomly, is a corn plant. Exactly the type of corn plant that he needs growing in the garden. And it had been planted by the equi their equivalent of a squirrel. Yeah, and at that moment, as I'm driving along, it's like, oh, it was a squirrel. Because I thought at the time, if a bird did that and then dropped it or something, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah, likely. But of course, we used to have squirrels pottering around in the garden planting things. Yeah, yeah. and I thought, yeah, it, you know, to yeah, plant. Stashes. Inside, not just drop it, yeah. plant it inside that pot. Yeah. And it just hit, hit me out of yeah. nowhere that that's yeah. what had happened Yeah, from that story. Brilliant. <laughs> that's a very similar thing where that story. Yeah, totally. And, you know, I think that, again, like a lot of these things, I think this these things happen a lot more than we realise. Yeah. You know, you, you turn the radio on and it's that song. Yeah. You know, or whatever. It's almost like you 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 were meant to turn that radio on at that point in time because it's that song. Yeah. Right? And... Um, well, we're, yeah, oh, we're, I, we're, sorry. No, I was going to say, so I'm quite interested in this sort of thing where you get this spillover into yeah. this sort of weirdness about things. And sometimes it's not really... It's not earth-shattering. No. Is it? But no. it has some sort of resonance that makes you go like, ah, right. Yeah, I got you. You know. Yeah. Yeah, ex exactly that. And 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 it is ordinary. And I and I mean that in the best possible way. Yes. We've been kind of kidded <laughs> that if you like, story and adventure is some kind of treat that is parceled out in Netflix movies or whatever it happens to be. Yes. And they will need a big fanfare to go with them and it'll be an event. But first you've got to you've you've, you've got to do your eleven hours of driving an Amazon van or <laughs> whatever it is that you're doing. And they're the kind of bombardment of that kind of make everything into a spreadsheet flatten yeah. is 
literally soul destroying. Yes. So if you want, and again, yeah. So you want to sort of take that back to that, and in my case, what is described as mental health. It's like, well, I, I'm, I'm not mentally ill. I'm just living living in a world that is profoundly damaged, and that's not just me. We, and yeah, we respect that. Yeah, because you came out with a really good term earlier, and I stop. I didn't stop you to say what does that mean. We were talking about things being flattened. Yeah. What did you say? I can't. Remember. Well, it's, it's both steamrolled and two dimensional. Yeah, yeah it's the. the yeah, you, you gave it. You gave it some sort of term actually, but I can't. Remember. Uh, I, I can't remember. <laughs> um, sensory something. Like that. No. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But yes. That is true. And of course, the problem is, and this is one of those things I think is really important. There's a lot in there's a lot of things that bleed through into reality that we don't yeah. realize. So yeah. if we're looking at things that are flat, like you're saying, yeah. it's a two-dimensional construct. Yeah. We start to think in two di two dimensional constructs because it's almost like that's where we are in our head. Yeah. Um, like you're saying, that things flatten out. Yeah. Um, one of the techniques I, I, I sort of say to people about songwriting, if you wanted to write in a particular style, you just have to put that music on in the background. You don't even have to listen to it. Yeah. For a period of time. And then you just pick an instrument up and start playing it. And you will start playing that stuff. Yeah, because it bleeds through into your, yeah, your. Now, the point about that is that sort of bleed through is one of those things that is happening all the time, and we can sort of go, yeah, don't listen to that, you know, whatever it is, rolling news, because you'll be a you know basket case at the end of it. Because we sort of get the fact that if you you that your your brain's always you know oh there's yeah. a problem oh there's another problem oh you know and so. On. But it's, of course, it's in everything. It's the way that people explain things. You know, how children are taught school, the sort of construct. Yeah, and sometimes that is the problem with this. It's the actual environment that the item, that the item sits in is more potent than the actual thing that's being said. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and that can have knock-on effects. So yeah. I... Well, uh, I ended up in on a psych ward on the sixth of the sixth, two thousand and six, which is not a. I'm not. You know, I haven't got that much of the religious thing in my background, but I. You know, my thing had started two or three days before that, and I landed then. Immensely popular day to be on a ward. It turned out. I bet it was. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Bet it was. Uh, yeah, and I buddied up with a guy whose name was Damien. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah exactly. So the impact, so his parents gave him that name with good intent, not you know, not yeah. knowing when he was six or whatever. <laughs> yeah, six, 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 six. Implications, implications which would be, you know, taunted at him through the remainder of his education. Yeah, you're the Antichrist, devil child. And is it any, I, yeah, I don't know what else was true for him because uh, nominative determinism only determined so much, I don't know. But he was a lovely, gentle guy who, and we buddied up basically because me and him just played board games and we wanted them to make it last an awful long time. We weren't bothered about who won. <laughs> it's, uh, but it's like, look, we're going to be here a while, just three weeks or something, you know, and let's just do the sandwiches and all the rest of it and, yeah, make the most. Yeah. And it passed. Um, well, it's not that straightforward, is it? But it's, um, yeah, it's. And I think within an environment like that, you've got so many versions of, you know, the stories people are bringing in there, which they either are affected by or aren't allowed to express, and you know, the tensions between them and how that plays out. And then utterly fucking crazy stuff. Um, so there was, there was, you, you kind of go and get your meds 
in the evening or it might be twice a day or something, but mostly the evening. And there was someone who was doling out the meds. It was actually one of the patients who was, no, this is really, oh, yeah, so if I'm going there as a patient and I recognise there's another patient giving me drugs and I, you know, apparently he's got a delusion that he's a doctor, then it's certainly a delusion that the staff there are complicit in. <laughs> it's really yeah. well, quite wacky. Here's another, here's, this is the story that would go along with yours, right? There used to be a, um, there used to be a, a, a hospital in Kent, mm -hmm. near Canterbury. Mm -hmm. I think it was called St. August Augustine's, St. Augustine's Hospital. And it's now a, it's now a housing estate. Uh, we'll just, we'll just park that to one side as well. Yeah. Um, but we went there to do a gig Brilliant. at the hospital. And one of the guys in the band, it was one of the percussion players. Um, he was, he was actually a, a, a psychiatric nurse, right? Yeah. So that's how we got them. Anyway. We turn up in the van, and there's a guy walking along on a walkie-talkie. And we could hear this guy saying, well, they're, they're here. And, then, and I thought, oh, my God, that's amazing. <laughs> I am really seriously impressed that they've got, you know, these organised. Yeah, yeah. Somebody with a Chaperone or something. <laughs> yeah. Of course, when, we got, when this guy got closer, we realised he didn't have a walkie-talkie at all. Um, he was, was he making the noises. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was doing all the all the stuff. <laughs> but what happened was, when we got out and started, you know, getting all the gearing, we were introduced to people who were the staff, and we would not have been able to have told the difference. Thank you, thank you. Between the two, <laughs> right? Thank you. Yeah, we couldn't tell who was the staff and who were the actual. Yeah. Patience. Yeah. Absolutely that. Um yeah. <laughs> I yeah, um there was I had an apocalypse now situation as well on another hospitalization. And that I, I'm a I'm um I'm six well six foot six, yeah. Which uh, quite into, you know, it's it is what it you know, it's just two numbers. And, and the way it's described height. But it's also something which has shaped NHS pur purchasing policy because height charts tend to go to six foot four. And that's <laughs> height charts for members of my species. So yes. something's not good there. Anyway, no. I am in this hospital and I'm being told that I should do some sort of therapeutic creative thing or whatever and how about having i go at the gardening adrian so maybe this is part of my <laughs> relationship with gardening so at this point the hospital is getting quite a lot of renovation done so the skips around there are there's earth moving equipment there's wheelbarrows and whatever mm. and you've got a dude who is sees my size this, this is the guy who's in charge of the garden says oh pick up yeah use that wheelbarrow, put a load of bricks in it and bring them through to the garden. And I, I don't know, I hadn't actually been into the garden area at that point, so I, I know where to go. And I go through and it's like, oh. And I realise what I'm looking at is his erection, which was this pagoda that he'd been building <laughs> for maybe two or three years with... Uh, however many patients <laughs> contributing to this edifice and I was bringing in some more for it and it's like what you know, uh, what is going on <laughs> yeah so it, it, like I say apocalypse now in some weird yeah. sense and I did not go back to the gardening group but I did and this was yeah the, the one I did go to and it was just a one-off experience but it was perfect it was a music group and i do not play an instrument as such but we did not need to for what happened there and you've got 
I don't know, five of us, maybe, who are just doing this. Oh, you all know this. Just you know, a beautiful improvisation appears out of nowhere that is could feel so much from this music and with this music and sharing the music and building it with these other people. Yeah, a bit of percussion. Someone probably knew how to play a guitar a bit. And there's a, yeah, I think I was noodling away on a piano. <laughs> and it was just perfect. Mm. 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 And that was, that was healing. Yes. Yeah. I think the, you know, obviously for everybody, it's not until you've, experienced health situations, whatever that is, whether that's mental yeah, health yeah. or physical health situations, that you get yeah. you really understand what it's like for people and what yeah. the situation is and how the world changes for people. Yeah. And all the time that you don't know that because you've not experienced it, you can never know those things even if you read them yeah. you can never actually know which actually makes that really difficult for people you know like you know how do you teach children who are dyslexic if you if you haven't got a dyslexic teacher yeah because you can read it in a book but that means nothing because you, you don't know what it's like you don't know how they see the world no um and also the fact that, you know, like you're saying about the, the you know, apocalypse, apocalypse now type pagoda um, idea, that people sort of become institutionalised in a way that they start to actually have their own domains within. Well, that's this. It was an abuse by that member of staff. Yeah. And maybe some people got some sort of benefit from it and good luck to them, but for me and I, you know <laughs> it was like no 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 this is you know which weirdly I mean, is a sort of mental illness that the yeah. member of staff is obviously got. yeah absolutely absolutely um, yes. but then, then the question becomes something like do you then want to tread on it and flatten it yourself <laughs> or do you find ways to live with it, learn from it, let yourself be part of it. Mm. Mm. Well, you kind of are part of it already, but how do how do you dance with it? How do you... Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's... I think that really is life, isn't it? Yeah. So he, here's an interesting thing, because I'm going through... I'm going through a real sort of change in what I'm doing which is pretty startling at the moment. Um, lots of sort of doorways have opened that I didn't expect. Um, and they, there's obviously like a domino effect that's going on yeah. for me. And it's actually put me in a sort of point where I think actually I'm, I mean, I'm in a better position to be able to deal with this now than I would have been a few years ago. Yeah. Because I think that, the secret of it is not to control it. So I've got these interesting sort of possibilities that have come up where I can, instead of, because obviously I, I do a lot of teaching, not, excuse me, not as much as I used to do, I must say, because at one time it was, I had people working for me and all the rest of it. <laughs> but now I've just got a few schools that I do. And I'm, I'm going to see a new one tomorrow. Mm -hmm. but I'm sort of sitting there thinking eh, I don't really want to do this because these other possibilities have started to come out which are I've got a couple of new, new bands that are possible one of them I sort of put on the back burner because I think actually it's not going to probably not going to get the time um, you know possibility of me going and examining abroad which I used to do a lot which yeah. I could do yeah but I've also had, and this is really weird, and I'll tell you this because no, nobody actually knows this yet, but 
I've got the possibility of doing some modeling, not okay. airfix modeling, yeah, yeah, but modeling, which yeah. is like I didn't expect. Um, and it came out of nowhere because I, I just it's one of these things I sort of saw on, maybe on an email that was a collection yeah. of things like, oh, there's this mod thing, and, I, and I've always sort of fancied like, it'd be nice to do a bit of extras, to, you know, film extra yeah. work, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think that might be listed in this anyway. We've got, I've got a couple of friends who do that sort of stuff. And it always sounds like just good fun, you know. Yeah. So I just like, sent off a photograph and just put my date of birth down and something and forgot about it. Which, as you know, <laughs> that is the worst thing you can possibly do if you want something to happen. <laughs> Forget about it, right? <laughs> because that is the, that is the yeah. truth. So I get this phone call just out of the blue. And there's this guy on the end of the, you know, on the end of the phone. He's talking about something. I think, what on earth is this? I mean, I, I completely forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I stopped for it and I said, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, what, what is this? And he said, we're the so-and-so agency. We, you sent us a photograph. <laughs> Brilliant. Is it like, we we do like photo shoots, for, you know, for modeling and stuff. It's like, oh, oh my god, yeah, sorry, I forgot all about it. <laughs> I must have thought I was a complete idiot. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, what basically what it transpired was, you know, obviously I'm in mean, the demographic that, yeah, obviously sells a lot, you know, sell a lot of things to people of of said age. Well, it. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, but it's also the demographic I've accidentally found myself in, which is older men with hair. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. So th that's a really good one. And of course, yeah, I, I didn't realise it was a thing, but well, I seem to be getting some attention. This is very exactly. nice. Exactly. Like, when you've got hair and you let it grow because you can, because <laughs> that's my attitude to this <laughs> The reason I've got long hair is because yeah. I can. Yeah, um, yeah, because otherwise it's like it seems a bit of a shame to have your hair cut short if you if you can grow your hair and you you know. <laughs> but yeah, that's a really good point actually. <laughs> um, so anyway, so yeah, as it turned out, I did a load of photographs done because I thought well it'd be brilliant laugh anyway, but I could use them as publicity shots anyway. Yes, right? uh, yeah, that at the very least. And exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but the obviously the person who was a photographer was brilliant. I mean, great. They are really good. So. I've been absolutely barraged by brilliant companies right now. So it's now right. <laughs> now, okay, that hasn't that hasn't sort of materialized into work yet because that's only it's only been like a couple of weeks. Yeah. So I've got all this stuff happening, you know, and they were saying to me, well, you know, if you you got if you've got a passport and stuff, you know, you'd be all right for sort of jumping on a plane and going off to, you know, Spain or something like that. Yeah. Fabulous. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, yeah. What's not to like? So yeah, yeah. So I'm sort of and you can thinking, take a guitar. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the point I was saying is that it suddenly put me in this place where if I sit back and start thinking, oh, I've got to sort this out, I've got to plan it, yeah. I, I, my head would go bang. So I've, I've, I've just sort of thought, no, just, just, just go along with this and see what happens. Well, and, I love the way you said it because you said you've got to plan it. And I was hearing it also as got to plan it. And I wonder what, yeah, planet like is. a planet, yeah, absolutely, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. But the thing is, that, you know, I don't, you can't, you can't plan those things, you just no. got to let them happen, yeah. And it's almost completely the, the other space that I've been in where obviously I'm teaching, I've got to plan that, yeah. Um, I'm sort of now feeling like something has shifted in me, it's like, can I be bothered with, yeah with that you know um so yeah so that's so i thought that's interesting that because i i love that's... that because for so many reasons but that whole kind of spontaneity and flow and fun of it is part of it but it's also the the antidote <laughs> to yeah. something yeah. which i you will have seen this i have seen this and I recognize it's <laughs> I recognize what it is now. So as let's think we will have both 
been around uh, people who are uh, somewhere on the scale of being um, kind of, they've got a personal brand. Yes. Yeah. And this is not necessarily a bad thing. I can see some advantages to it and so forth. But there's there's a something else which I started to realise because I, I, I just kept coming across problems with this for me. And I was I, I started to work out the, what for, what what it seems to be in my estimation. And uh, so effectively the, the 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 promise of a brand is that you'll be consistent which is kind of a denial of any human being of any <laughs> worth that i've come across really and i only yeah. can say well the, the consistency should be in such and such or whatever but it's like yeah but really you and but you know what i'm talking about so again you, someone's flattening themselves yes <laughs> Yes, uh, but it's for the service of SEO results, let's say, <laughs> and, yes. and all this. Yeah, yeah. But then, so what is going on there? Because effectively, you're asking an individual to become a corporation, mm -hmm. yeah, because they are their own, you yeah. know, marketing manager, CEO, Salesforce, etc. But what do we know about corporations? Well, if a corporation was a person, it would be a psychopath or a sociopath. We hear that lots. So you you put those things together, mm. and it's like this is why I get the jittery jeepers <laughs> around. Not all because that's that. No, yeah, that's not a blanket description. Nothing ever is, but you will know where I speak. Mm. And I think is there is a something, you know, at the point when you become a plug-in <laughs> for a um, late stage capitalism, if not end stage, depending on what mood you wake up in that day. Yeah. Yeah. then I don't want to be playing that game. No, because again, I don't want to be playing, I though. this is another interesting point here, because all of these things sort of dovetail into sort of ideas that go around in NLP anyway, really. Well, th this is it, because an NLP is not necessarily a culprit, but no. it's part, it's just, it's symptomatic or when it's badly taught and badly and all the rest of it of yeah. how do we, you know, like treating human beings as sales funnels. Um, yes, exactly, exactly, and yeah. and, and, and that somebody's a, is a visual, and somebody yeah. and a, they're a, in actual fact, it's a, never quite yeah. as straightforward as that. Yeah, yeah, um, and um, so I was going to say um, about the NLP bit. I've just gone off a tangent. Uh, anyway, you'll come back to me, but um, well, yeah, so. I was just saying about the sort of corporation of how people think. Oh, yeah, yeah, diversity. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. You know, if you look at nature, yeah, it's, you know, biodiversity yeah. gone mad. Yeah. And within that, you get a sense of balance. Exactly. Through right relation, to use that term, because it's yes. a huge term, uh, rather than let us once again <laughs> we don't need to be in that box <laughs> exactly so here's an interesting point there because although obviously you know patterns are really good yeah um routines are good and yeah, humans absolutely. do routines but yeah. if you look at different healing systems in the past like ancient healing systems i mean ayurveda is yeah. one of those yeah where they would say that you know routine really good do this eat this at this time da, 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 da. yeah and every now and again you break it and you shake it up brilliant and you think yeah and god is that not right yeah you've got to do that you've got to do that you know sometimes you've got to have a really you know exactly break. do the yeah, teaching too much and you know go shake and do some system. modeling yeah yeah, yeah. And this seems to be lost. Yeah. The, the whole idea that the, the probably the most perfect ideas are sitting out there in nature. You just have to go and have a look. Yeah. You know, think, well, you know, everything seems to be cyclical. There seems to be seasons and all the rest of it. So when people go, oh, oh, my God, we're going into a recession. Yeah. No, it's, it's normal, right? 
happens every now and again. It's a pattern. I mean, it's, you'll it's remember pattern, but also you the, know, the end of boom and bust and all that stuff that was yeah. it's not No, absolutely. It's like, a, be aware that it could be happening. But yeah, yeah. but it's going to happen. That's the yeah. point. It's yeah. a natural and, phenomenon. And what right. else do you pay attention to? And I'm, and what I'm thinking there, so I, I was walking home one night and, again, voice in my head, um, uh, spend two pound on lottery tickets. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, yeah, woman's voice, middle of my head. Don't normally get a voice there. Who knows? And so I say, well, is that one ticket or two? No response. Go to the nearest shop, um, and I, I purchase a two pound uh, lottery ticket, which is the only sort they've got, and I win forty quid. Which I'm pretty chuffed by, as you can imagine. And there's a, as you'll know, there's a feeling that goes with these things when it's a hang on, yes. something just happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then, of course, you trick yourself, but I, you then second guess yourself, I'm going to buy another, I'm going to buy another one a couple of days' time. And I did, but what I realized you're learning there is, Oh, that signal wasn't actually really there then, and I you're, you're calibrating yeah. it, but you're, you're finessing, and then it's like, all right, just ease off, and another shop, and on this occasion, <laughs> you got all the tickets. Um, yeah, all the tickets are there, and there was a, it was a felt thing. <laughs> between two of them it's like is it that one is it that one is it this one is it that one 40 pound again wow yeah and then a couple of weeks later another shop <laughs> and it's not like i'm looking to do this all the time at all but it's like when that yeah. whatever and when there wasn't a voice with that on it was just i was in i think i was in the shop anyway and then that yeah. happened yeah, yeah yeah and there's a third time when um I know there's a something. Now, if you think about it from an NLP point of view, first thing, I've got this internal auditory thing, which leads to it. Second one, I've got a kinesthetic thing. Yep. The third one, it's like, I, I know without knowing <laughs> quite what. And I, I think, oh, God. And I realise, as I look <laughs> on this occasion, all of them are, let's get this, but all of them are facing away from me, but one is facing towards 20 quid. Right. Thank you very much. For, yeah. And because how do we get in a situation like this in the first place? It's partly because of kind of upbringing and some of the oddness yep. that my, well, oddness isn't the right word, but the, just some of the stuff, family uh, experience. So um, we had a family, the, you know, the dentist we went to, uh, when we were kids, um, was also a acupuncturist who trained in China. Yeah, was, you mentioned him last time. Oh, yeah. OK, so, yeah. And I'd, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. And he, so just seeing something like that. And um, so the that kind of openness there, which yeah, is also there in going to Cromer in 1976 when there's the plague of ladybirds which is just something that shouldn't happen. And you're crunching in on yeah. ladybirds and you don't want to. And yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, that is, what is that? So yeah. out of all that, then my willingness to share some of these things with mom who, you know, she's, she's used to it. She's, she's down with, <laughs> so yeah, oh, I like this medal. What was he in all this? And, um, she, I tell her this and say, well, that's interesting because, uh, I she, she doesn't buy, you know, sorry, it's not lottery tickets, anyway, it's scratch cards because the other part of yeah, the yeah, 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 no, strategy no. point of view is, is the yeah, past yeah. result. Yeah? yeah, you're not waiting till the no, no. yeah. And she'd got her something which told her by a scratch card and she had run 40 quid. Well, there we go. So <laughs> that's fascinating. Yeah, now I've there's an interesting thing that's because again, this is I think this is another thing that a lot of people probably have an experience in their life at some point or another. Yeah. Where they just know something. 
Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So, um, I used to. How old was I? Was living in Dartford, so I must have been about eleven or twelve. Mm -hmm. um, there used to be on a Saturday. They used to have horse racing on the TV. Yeah. Right. World of sport, or whatever it was. Yeah. We'd sit there and have lunch, and I'd look at the names of the horses, and I'd say, that one's going to win. And, yeah, it was like I was – I seemed to be right all the time. No, I right. wasn't right all the time, but pretty much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then that went on for a while, and then suddenly it stopped. Yeah. Were your parents asking you – yeah, were you being no, put I just say, oh, to... that one's going to win, and it would win. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I used to, if we were in somewhere, we were somewhere and they were going to be drawing a raffle ticket. Yeah. I would know I was now going to win. This time, I'm yeah, going to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just knew, right? Yeah. Um, and that's a strange thing because, again, you know, following the nlp thing you would go how did you how did you know that where was it in you you know it was a feeling in this instance you know yeah. um but the probably the most profound one i was uh, in i was in cornwall um, so i left cornwall by the time i was 11 11 plus Done the so yeah, eleven or twelve I left. So I was probably about nine or ten, and they had this thing at the school where one of the teachers was going to do a, a talk about this holiday that he'd been on, and it, it, I think he went to Austria and Germany and everything, which was really unusual at that mm. time. You know? But it was like a slideshow and all this. Thing. And I was sitting there, and I don't know why. I assumed it was going to finish earlier. But it seemed to be like you know, it was getting dark, and and of course the school was nowhere near where I lived because most people used to walk miles and then to go to school. Where... And I thought, oh, I was not. I've got to break. I'm going to have to break the projector. Wow. <laughs> so it was a slide projector, right? Old fashioned slides. Yeah. And I can remember sitting there <laughs> and willing this thing to break. Yeah. And I think it only took about 10 minutes and the thing jammed. And this guy, Mr. Harrison, his name was, yeah, was so embarrassed yeah. about the fact that he couldn't get the projector to work. And it, we'd have to sort of, that was the, sort of the end yeah, because he couldn't get the projector to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I sort of slightly <laughs> sort of sheepishly <laughs> It's because they were going to make tea or something. I got up and left. And yeah. as I was walking home, I thought, I broke that projector. Because it, you, I knew I had. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was just like, I, it, it was everything was there. You know? So when I got home, I told my mum about it. And she went, oh, dear. <laughs> she, she was, That's well, a lovely she response. Was quite, she was quite <laughs> something. But it's like, oh, yeah. I think you should have done that. That's fabulous. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? But it was the feeling. Again, it was the feeling about it. Yeah. It wasn't like I just had a thought about it and it just went wrong. Yeah. It yeah. was almost like I could feel this thing sort of like yeah. building up inside me. Yeah. And I real intention to, to do something about this because I had to go home and I was thinking it's getting dark. Yeah. yeah. And I got about two-mile walk or something ridiculous, you know. So, yeah, but I think it's – so I think a lot of people got sort of weird stories like that where they sort of go, well, it was sort of strange this happened and it felt like this. And, yeah. and it's like, oh, was that me? But instead, it, it's, it's you know, sit in front of the TV, make sure you take the adverts in and do your homework. Yes, and... well, this is it. That's always like that's using that same power, but yeah. as a feedback loop, yeah, yeah. 
to the point where we know, you know, is it a third of Americans have said, hey, we're up for having uh, advert breaks in our dreams, which is where some of that technology is going now. Oh, utterly terrifying. God, that is ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it it all all backfire. (laughs) I think it probably already has, actually, to be frank. Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) So... Okay, so there's a lot of stuff there which you could sort of say we're sort of skirting around the magical with this. But, you know, obviously, it don't, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter how you look at this, whether you just think of it as a sort of a psychological thing or something that we just truly cannot understand. Um, no, but obviously, no. how, how we sort of interface with the, with the world yeah. is, is that thing, isn't it? It is, and, and that's... I. Uh... I, I, I met Silver Surfer in a nature reserve in Nottingham, which I hadn't banked on. And I was only high on life. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and he was whizzing on his board above the river. This was a bit of a surprise, certainly to me, possibly to him. Don't know. And <laughs> it happened. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then I came to think about that some more and it's like well amongst other things like well you've silver surfer is 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 basically a messenger of the gods yes shiny fast delivering messages on behalf yeah of absolutely sort of a sort of hermes yeah. or yeah Mercury. exactly all of that so that yeah. then led me to create these a sort of tarot of sorts fantastic forecasts oh, oh wow because and it's all from the old Kirby stuff. Wow, that's brilliant! Yeah, I, I was assisted in this with a friend, so I, I chose the images, and he's a designer, and he scanned it and made these great surrounds and everything. So, did you have you, have you sort of produced those, or were they just? Well, I'm, I'm, I, I made about uh, I think twelve, because uh, that's obviously like profound copyright issues. If yes. we yeah, yeah, want yeah, to yeah, go absolutely. down that road, but. They um they fucking kick ass. <laughs> and, yeah, that's looks they look amazing. Well, I, I, yeah, um I, and I think the oh yeah, this is one of my favorites. So the thing is you to create a give it entity again. You want yeah, I want to be it needs to be it needs to live up to where it came yeah. from. Yeah. And as I've in explored it or then we've related. I, I don't know it as well as I'd like to. Um, I, I think it possibly needs some more cards and a different selection, but it is, you know, for 20 odd years or so now, uh, it has been, um, yeah, provided some, because the other part of it with the Fantastic Four, that's where Surplus first start, first turned up. And those four characters are very much elemental. So that was kind of the, the four yeah. chain. Yeah, yeah that's the th- thing with a lot of graphic, well, graphic novels or comics or whatever, however you want to sort of think of them. Yeah. Um, because obviously those writers were deeply involved, or many of them were deeply involved in very sort of, well, sort of esoteric sort of things. They were coming at it from all sorts of things, weren't they? Yeah. And obviously you could look at a lot of, even the, the sort of standard famous characters that we'd all go, like Superman, but, yeah, yeah, there's something sort of Apollo or whatever. You know what I mean? It's got that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's got that sort of um, the vibe of yeah. some. Yeah. It's got the stuff. Yeah. Brilliant. Awesome. Okay. Look, we've been talking for <laughs> 10 minutes. That's brilliant. Yeah. Okay. that That's really great, Adrian. That's such a great chat. No, thank you. That's been really. Yeah, real and very enjoyable and right. has got me thinking, uh, which is always good. Yeah, no, I, I think this is the point that, you know, just being able to liberate how we think. Yeah. It's so important. You know, we just need to let go of logical processes every now and then in order to explore yeah. things in ways. Because again, I mean, without going down a and the ring of the hole at this point. But, you know, if you think about experiences that people have that you can sort of think of as religious experiences that, you know, or psychic experiences or whatever, yeah. they often come from a point where 
the logical process has been lost. You know, yeah. it could be yes. trauma, it could be yeah. psychedelics, it could be, you know, an accident or whatever. Um, and you think, well, if that's the case, and then amazing things come from that, you yeah. know, life changing yeah. things within that person. I mean, there's a lot of stuff with near death experiences, aren't there, where people come back. Yeah. And they can speak another language or something bizarre. You yeah, know, that's yeah. me sort of kind of like, what? what? <laughs> How does that work, right? Um, you can make it simple. So bring it back to that Ayurveda thing you were saying. It's like, well, you know, never mind being a vata today. <laughs> you know, yes. tomorrow go and, I don't know, eat ice cream. Or yes, something. exactly. Yeah, do, do, do the opposite, you know. Yeah, do, do, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and, exactly. And I think that is the thing that we need to do that. Yeah. We need to sort of take that imaginative thing out for a walk. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's brilliant. Cool. Right. Thank so you. I think we'll, we'll draw a line there, shall we? We shall. Yes. That was brilliant. <laughs> really, really good. Thanks. Was, no, that was really enjoyable. Lovely. All right. All right. Catch up soon. We shall. Look after yourself. Bye. Yeah. Cheers and bye. Mm -hmm.